hello and welcome to Garrock Farms. In today's video, we're going to talk about the wood boiler here on the farm. It's used to heat the house as well as the shop. My father, he's going to talk about the things he likes and he doesn't like. And uh, we're also going to clean out the ash so you guys will get to see how we do that. Also, he purchased a new wood boiler, so he'll talk about that a little bit. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. We bought this boiler new in 04. Now my first boiler was the exact same thing except the smaller version with this which I bought in 95 but when we added the shop with it then we decided in 04 we're going to get a bigger boiler the shop went in in 05 so early last winter I was losing water and I didn't know where and I I couldn't see any leaks in the firebox and I didn't know if it was my shop floor or where it was but before I investigated too deep into it, I decided let's just buy a new boiler. And I had a guy called, he said he had one. It's actually from Canada. It's called a Portage in Maine. And I've looked at this boiler several different years before I decided to just purchase it. And I thought, well, the thing is with boilers, they're usually pretty good. If you treat them right, this one's been very good to us. The only thing we've been replacing is a solenoid, which is known to go bad maybe every fourth, fifth year. It's a very inexpensive piece. But other than that everything's been pretty good the leak we found it um, middle of last winter it was where I had to extend the line to fit this boiler from my first boiler underneath the slab so we had to just make a makeshift line over top of ground that went to the house just for the finish out the winter but anyway like here you can see the water level and it goes to there and if I so we turn it on and we check that every day and then they got this little gauge here and really all that is is keeping your there, there's about right in here some places the top of the firebox and you just want to keep the water above the top of the firebox when this thing goes bad this little solenoid in here and we'll show you a picture of that later but it's it's basically just something that magnetizes and keeps the flap open and it gets stuck so when it says it's hot enough it shuts it off with the aquastat and the door doesn't shut and then it make, lets the fire rage the water starts boiling and then on top this is what they call an open system and the other one i'm thinking they call it the same thing so that's just a loose cover and there's a little vent in it but if i look at that and that's popped off that'll tell me this thing has been boiling overnight and then i check my water and it can boil for a while before it takes the water level down but anyway that was the only thing that would ever go wrong we're gonna clean the ash out of this one. There's not much wood. I didn't fire too hard today. Today's warmer. And we always inspect the fire box. We never burn garbage in there. A few cardboard boxes of paper sacks to get it started, but I won't burn garbage in there. And that's usually, uh, that's something that guys make a mistake with. They try to get rid of some of their stuff that they shouldn't. Now in here, so they give you pretty much a diagram of how things generally need to be set up depending on your type of system, but our pumps are all in our buildings, in our house and in our shop. And we try to keep everything as insulated as we can because all you're doing is heating the world if you don't. So we just keep this wad of insulation in there. You can have the pumps in here too. I advise them put them in the buildings. There's better for the pump. They can catch air and whatever heat comes off those heats your building. And then they got valves on so I can shut one off or we had to do some work. And then there's this power switch here. Now there you hear my solenoid shut off. Now I'm going to turn it on. Give it a second. They're turned on. That's all it does. It's all stone is open in the draft door. So anyway, when it was sticking open, we basically have to just tap on the side to get it to shut. And that will tell us we either got to lube it up, a little WD-40. And there's a temperature gauge here that needs to get replaced. That's the only thing. And I think it's set at 180 degrees. Um, we just never replaced it and uh, and I know if this is operating that means it's under 180 you just get to learn it you, you know what now back here stainless steel chimney comes with four feet add it on another four feet you get a little better draft um, to keep your your smoke up a little higher now this doesn't look too bad I haven't cleaned this out all winter and that ain't too bad there's a little soot in there. I might have to get in there and push it back into the boiler. But, um, this is all original. I've never done nothing with this. Other than inspect it and clean it. Got a cast iron door with an extra plate in front here to kind of help protect it. 
Um, and the ash pan on this one is, I believe it's like a quarter inch thick. Now see, we're just gonna kind of push some of the hot coals back. And shovel this thing out. Now somebody asked, well, you know, what we do with our ashes, or if we should use them on the slippery driveway in front of the barn, but I've done it. You have to be cautious. You have to think kind of like spreading fire in front of your barn when they're hot like this, and they don't cool off very fast. You can put them in a pail, and a week later, there can still be coals inside that. So what I do with them for the most part is if we got a load of manure ready to go out in the field, we'll dump them on top of that and spread that right away, or I'll just go into a close-by field and maybe drive backwards with the bobcat and just feather them out into the field. It's some um, fertilizer, especially if there's a little snow in the field. One year I, <laughs> I, I did that and there was no snow and the grass started burning. And the grass was short, of course, but it kind of makes you think. Yeah, so we're gonna scrape this down. Now in the spring, we'll, I'll always scrape it right up. Virtually sweep it. But now during the heating season, we just get most of it out, let's say about 80%. You throw some small pieces of wood back in. Sometimes you got a few coals, you can separate them out in your skid steer bucket and then throw the coals right back on top of the fire, or on top of the wood, I mean. And it virtually lights right up. So you never really lose the temperature of your water. And it's amazing when you get that ash level down. Now there's water jacket all the way around this. And it's amazing how you don't use nearly the wood. The more often you clean these out, the more efficient they are. And I think a lot of guys kind of neglect like that. Like a lot of things, it's just is not a fun job. It's a dusty job. Pick out somewhat of a warmer day so you can let the fire burn down a little bit. We'll fire this thing from virtually from October, you know, as soon as it gets cold enough to say we need heat, all the way till June, till I need air conditioning, because I can't run them together. We're just set up that way. We have a, a gas backup, and it's kind of interesting because we got one of the smaller gas tanks out back behind the house, and since we put that in in '95 when we built the house. And we're still on our first tank of gas yet. And I have used it when the kids were small. We just used it a little bit to keep the floors warm or something when you had a cooler day in the summer or the spring or the early fall. But this boiler is really cleaned up our farm. Now, he got a wood stove in the house, fireplace or some sort of burner in the house. You kind of want pretty clean wood. Now you think about it, see? We have our wood, you know, most of the firewood's made from trees that aren't so pretty anymore, and they might have some insects under the bark, and you split this up, stack it up outside, and you bring it into your house in the fall. It warms up, all those bugs come to life, and run off into your home, so. Out here, it's like this wood pile. Some of this stuff isn't so pretty. And as long as it isn't like a piece of styrofoam, we bring it home and we use it to heat something with it. And we're cleaning it up. We're not just burning it up in the woods. And as long as it's got any kind of heart to it at all. Now this year, this is all cleaned out of an area that it's mostly box elder, some birch, elm, soft maple, woods that don't hold heat very long. So we went through a pretty good pile because of that. But again, easy to make, kind of light. It's close to the house, close to the barn. We can fire it a little more often. If you want to know how much wood they use, it can vary tremendously by the type of wood you use. So if you're using all white oak, red oak, some of the really good solid woods and good hardy stuff, you can get twice as much heat out of a block of wood if it's a good solid piece. So on a really cold night, you know, you can see there's a few larger pieces on the bottom where they were too heavy to throw up higher, but we always try to wrestle one or two of those in every night and they'll hold their heat longer. But the downside to this boiler is, I think what we're doing right now, and I don't think it's a terrible thing, it's just the idea that it doesn't have any kind of ash removal system other than you almost virtually gotta shovel all the fire right out of it to clean it. They send this rake with, 
and typically every morning or at least once a day you want to go in with this rake before you throw wood in for all your coals and kind of your small wood particles forward because when you throw wood in it kind of pushes it to the back now you remember your air is coming into the front right about in here my first boiler it was coming into the side they call it a cyclone draft or something i think it was just some kind of fancy name to help sell it but the draft was in lower on the side so then if you didn't know what you were doing when you fired it a block of wood would roll up against that draft hole and sometimes partly plug it and then it would almost make your fire go out so you had to be kind of careful to juggle your wood which this is the better way and i think the only downside was to it is you have some kind of flexible wiring that got to go into it and you got a moving part that's all it's nothing nothing that i would change to be different but this boiler has been good for us it's never been welded we haven't had to do anything the only thing i did is replace the gasket around the door i think i'm on my third solenoid from the original which is not bad so since 04 this is heated my house heated my shop so the shop's a 44 by 80 well heck we got 14 foot doors in there the ceiling's even taller than that so that's a lot of area and our house is uh what is it a 58 by 30 two-story we heat our garage and everything 70 degrees and warmer i'm not going to complain about it and i would never replace it if i knew it wouldn't go bad but i'm concerned like everything it never lasts forever now this boiler is actually for sale and i would like to sell it why it's still working to show whoever would be interested in it that this boiler is good because i don't want to disconnect it until someone's ready to to load it or to move it to their spot they claim it's like as long as it stays full of water gotten used every year you ask guys well how long can they last and nobody has the answer i think it's how we take care of it anyway a little bit of work but i look at it like having a couple extra cabs to feed every day kind of like that and with a dairy farm we're home all the time somebody's got to be here every day morning and evening anyway so check the boiler morning and evening pretty much twice a day on the really really bitter days you might want to check it a third time but if you fire it right you can get by with twice a day and on the days when it gets above freezing you could probably get by it once a day with the way we're set up so it keeps this water inside this boiler 180 degrees at all times and if it's not it's feeding it air as long as it's got wood to burn it'll heat it up so then you have a radiator in your house, what you call forced air, so that, and we got some diagrams that can show you how that stuff works, but basically it's just a small pump that circulates the water from this unit to your house or from this unit to the shop. So you got a line coming and a line going. So all your water is doing is it's circulating. And then when it needs heat, it'll uh, turn on the fan, as far as the house is concerned, and blow air through a radiator, just like your car would work. And then uh, distribute your heat around your house. And then the shop, we got a heated floor, which it runs the warm water through the floor. So your floor is like a giant radiator, radiating heat. As far as I'm concerned, that's probably the better way to heat. There'll be corn here next year anyway, so this is all good. I've been doing something for my wife for over 30 years where I would always clean out the boiler and put it in a two or three five gallon buckets and take it up on a snowy hillside and then make like a heart with it out of the ashes. The outline. Then when the sun comes out, it it burns them ash down into that snow like like if it's as dark and, you know, and uh, she gets a better charge out of that than buying flowers. Yeah, so those of you with uh, some wood ash trying to impress your uh, significant other, that's uh, a great idea. Something real simple like that goes a long way. To give my opinion about wood heat, I think it's the best kind of heat out there. Since I moved off the farm, I've lived in a house with propane and with natural gas and by far wood heat feels the best it's just a nice dry warm crisp heat 
I feel like in a house heated by propane, it gets kind of muggy. But we're gonna head into the shop and talk about that new boiler. So this is our new boiler. Now this came somewhere out of Canada. We took it off the truck here a year and a half ago and pretty much set it in this spot. Kind of a two-door system and you know, like everything, it'd be something different to get used to. There's still some things for me to learn about this boiler. The one real big difference is our ashtray and this has got grates they're not shaker grates so there's a metal bar that comes with it and it's just some simple scraper thing i suppose we could use this or if we have anything else that works better it wouldn't really matter but all you're doing is working the ash through the cracks so it falls into this tray and I imagine this is gonna to need to be cleaned out a little more often than we clean out our other ones. So what we're gonna to need to do is have a steel barrel with a lid, with a steel lid, so I can scoop this out and dump it into that barrel and put that lid over it. That might be on some sort of hinge or something, simply because I've heard of this happening, and it's kind of a nightmare really, where guys will clean out the ashes and dump them near the boiler and end up igniting their wood pile. And then, of course, you got an inferno right there in your wood pile near the building or house or something. So it's something different to get used to, but this is completely sealed. You got a gasket in here, so no air gets in there. This has actually got a blower in the back. Um, that box in there is a, that's an extension for the chimney. And you can see the grates. brick in this one. The other one doesn't have brick in it. So I think, and I think it's all replaceable, but it doesn't sound like something that you need to get replaced very often. And then here, I kind of made it a, a rule to buy as much plumbing parts as I think I'll need to hook this one up where the other one sits. I think we're going to be able to use the same slab. The firebox is similar in size. One thing I've noticed is uh, the door is taller. Heavier pieces of wood are gonna be a little bit of a challenge. And the stuff that ain't so heavy, it's maybe almost kind of better. You're more at your level to throw it in. And this one here is supposed to have less water. I don't have the specifications in front of me. Like, like here's, uh, I think this is more of like an inspection hole where your exhaust will go up into the back, come towards the front, go around a corner, go back toward the back, and then up the flue. So there's more of a, a maze for your exhaust to go through. And I think that's supposed to be scraped down every so often, maybe. It just depends on how your wood is burning, if it's burning hot. But I think the bigger thing for me to get used to is this two-door system. I mean, it's just like going into a house where you got a storm door and then a, a main door, so. So, and then in the back, this is our blower, and an aquastat. Thinking this is set up for 180, and um, I still gotta figure out what the, which is the in and an out. But we, I think we got our, we got a couple pipes up there, and we got a couple here, so we can hook it up to two different lines. I think our flue system here is pretty much the same as the other one, and I think this switch here would should cut our power. So right here we'd come in with our power wire from where our other boilers hook. We just hook right back in there, and that would activate everything or if you had to work on your pump you'd shut it off so I think you can yeah there's a key lock here so you and I think it's on the front that way so you could actually lock it so some little people or something you would be concerned about you could lock it so no one could tamper with it and I was looking at the colors it comes in this brown I'm not crazy about this brown but this is just roofing steel basically to sell tappers a person could buy some Steal with the color you want. A couple small sheets and fit them in there. Imitate what's already in there. Get any color you want. Same with the other one. So then on top, there's a, and there's just a float on this one. And I can maybe make it like this. And that just, when it's full, that should be hanging out like that. Again, that's an open system. It's not sealed shut. I mean, it's supposed to be a little more efficient than the other one, but that's a salesman for me, you know, trying to sell me this versus what I have. Completely different company, so 
I think they're both good companies. Um, Central Boiler has been around a long time. Um, they've got a pretty decent reputation. And this one here, coming out of Canada, let's face it, it's colder up there. Those people got to know what they're doing when they eat stuff. And so here, we've got a shop video coming out where I probably explained this pretty good. We're heating our water. So this is all, you know, set this same setup in my house. Main pump, where this pump is pretty much on as long as you want heat. Thermostat over there, set at 50 degrees. Pump circulates constantly when it says it needs heat. Turns on this pump and then there's a mixing valve and some different things. There's a few details to it. As far as in the house, the only difference is, is that instead of running it through all these lines, it runs it through a radiator, which is in your plenum inside your rich existing furnace, or it can be added in there or something. These pumps, the, the amperage, these are, they're very low. They, they don't use hardly any electricity, along with that blower on there too. It's very, very efficient. All right, so that's it for the boiler video. I hope you guys learned something. Uh, if, uh, if you guys enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe. But uh, before we go, uh, he just came back from a vacation. Is there anything you want to talk about? Well, it was, it, it was definitely different. I'm one to explore. I like to go off the beaten path. I've been walking around the desert, getting to see what real Arizona is about, not just the beaten path. So it was a good trip. Yeah. The best part is I knew that things were getting taken care of responsibly here at home. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. And we'll see you in the next one.